Have you ever felt like you're broken because of your thoughts? You're not alone. Imagine living with the constant fear that you might accidentally harm someone you love, even though you'd never intentionally do so. This is the reality for many people with a less commonly known form of OCD. I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I help you strengthen your mind and fortify your brain to build resilience. Today, we're going to explore some OCD obsessions that you might not have heard about and look at why they happen. OCD, or obsessive compulsive disorder, is a complex mental health disorder characterized by intrusive, unwanted thoughts, known as obsessions, and repetitive behaviors or mental acts called compulsions. These compulsions are performed to alleviate the anxiety caused by the obsessions. And the relief is short-lived, unfortunately, and the compulsions only reinforce the obsessions. When we think of OCD, what usually comes to mind are behaviors like washing hands repeatedly or checking the door to see if it's locked dozens of times. But OCD can manifest in many other ways that aren't so easily recognizable. And it's not just about cleanliness or perfectionism. The obsessions can center around a number of irrational beliefs. Here are five other types of OCD obsessions. Number one is harm OCD. This involves intense, unwanted fears of harming others. A person with harm OCD might obsess over thoughts like, what if I lose control and hurt someone? These obsessions can lead to compulsive behaviors like avoiding sharp objects, not driving a car, or excessively seeking reassurance from people that you're not a dangerous person. Here's another example. Susan lives in fear every day because she believes that her child will be struck down if she doesn't recite a certain set of words every time she enters a room where her child is. Now, you could ask Susan, how would your child be struck down? Are we talking a lightning strike, a bullet through the window? What? Susan doesn't know how it would happen and knows how illogical this sounds, but it doesn't matter. It's this gut feeling that she has that she can't shake and she doesn't wanna test it and risk something happening to her child. For some people, these harm obsessions are really distressing and disabling for them. As for the origins of this obsession, it may stem from an exaggerated sense of responsibility and an inability to tolerate uncertainty. Psychologists who focus on evolution suggest that it might stem from an overly active threat detection system in the brain. Also, people with harm OCD often have a strong moral compass and value the well being of others, which paradoxically manifests as fear of causing harm. Number two is relationship obsessions. And this happens when a person has intense, intrusive doubts about romantic relationships. You might constantly worry, do I really love my partner? Or what if I'm not meant to be with this person? Even if you're in a stable relationship, these thoughts can persist, causing you to constantly seek reassurance or overanalyze the relationship. Like, how are we doing? Are we okay? If you doubt your commitment to your partner, you may analyze every interaction for signs of incompatibility. It's as if you can't stop questioning if you made the right decision. And if this is you, you may unconsciously sabotage several relationships or drive people away because you can't feel settled that this is the person for you. Possible origins of relationship OCD are attachment insecurity, past relationship trauma, fear of commitment, or even societal pressure surrounding perfect relationships. Another thought about the origin is early experiences with caregivers can shape our expectations and fears in adult relationships. Evolutionary psychologists say that it's instinctual to select a good mate because it's necessary for survival. So some people are then wired to see this as a critical decision and overcheck it. Number three is somatic or sensory motor obsessions. These involve an overfocus on bodily sensations and physical processes. You can become hyper aware of your own breathing, blinking or swallowing, and then obsess over the sensation to the point where it disrupts your daily life. For example, let's say today you're focused on your blinking. You may notice that your blinking pattern was off and you'll correct it by blinking more in a certain cadence to get it just right. 
It's like your eyes just don't feel right until you do the right blink. Because these kinds of behaviors draw negative attention to yourself, because let's just face it, it's not a good look, some people will just avoid being around people when they feel really overstimulated. I say overstimulated because many times the intensity can come and go. You can have days where it's not much of a problem for you and you only need to correct something a couple of times and it's subtle. Then you can have a day where something sets you off or you're especially anxious and you notice every little sensation. And you can be in such a state that you're almost non-functional. And once you get a reset, life makes sense again. Somatic OCD is closely linked to health anxiety. Some people who suffer with health anxiety have increased sensitivity to internal body sensations. And this is called interoceptive awareness. And there's an exposure therapy designed to help with this hyper-awareness. Another possible link is having an early experience of illness that was traumatizing or disruptive to your life, like childhood cancer, or witnessing a close family member suffer through an illness causing you to be hypervigilant about body sensations. You interpret these sensations as signals that you have another illness or the return of the original illness. Number four is religious or moral obsessions, also called scrupulosity. With these obsessions, you fear sinning, offending a higher power, or acting in ways that contradict your moral beliefs. You may doubt your moral character, and this doubt doesn't have to come because you did something that you're now questioning. It's like you can have this wave of doubt come over you and you connect it to some thought you may have had or a past behavior. For example, some people will believe that they did or thought something that they can't even remember. And if you ask them about it, they believe that they can be held responsible for things that they don't remember doing. Possible origins are being raised in a rigid religious upbringing while also having a temperament of being psychologically inflexible or perfectionistic. So you can be from a family with three other siblings exposed to the same upbringing, but you are the only one who develops scrupulosity because of your temperament and proneness to anxiety. Your other siblings may be affected in other ways, like rejecting the teachings of the church or embracing it and making it their vocation. I'm making this point because it's not a universal effect that a rigid religious upbringing makes this happen for everyone. It's just one factor combined with other aspects of your personality. Other influences are perfectionism, fear of punishment, or a strong need for certainty and control. And number five lesser known OCD obsession is emotional contamination obsessions. You're probably very aware of obsessions around fear and germs, but another form of this involves fear of being contaminated by the negative traits of or emotions of other people. You believe that people with negative thoughts and emotions can transfer their emotions over to you if you're in close proximity to them. So you avoid these people or situations to keep your thoughts and emotions pure. And this isn't necessarily referring to moral purity. It can mean originating only from you and not mixed with anyone else. This obsession could stem from an exaggerated belief in the power of social influence and a strong desire to maintain emotional or intellectual purity. It also has some qualities of magical thinking where you believe thoughts and proximity can directly influence reality. If you feel like this video is jumping into the middle of a conversation where you missed the beginning, I can help you with that. I created a short playlist of some of my previous videos to catch you up. The playlist includes an explanation of OCD, attachment theory, and health anxiety. If you find that bodily sensations make you anxious and worry, I explain interoceptive exposure therapy in the behavior tools section of my book, Why Am I So Anxious? And I give you some exercises that you can do on your own in Appendix F on page 277. I hope this was insightful for you. Thanks for watching. See you next time.